Hey everybody, uh, today is going to be a little bit of a longer video as I want to talk about my multi-tool, the Victorinox Swiss Champ. I'm going to go over why I use this, the different features of this particular model, and what I think of it overall. So I got this as a graduation gift, and I've been carrying it for about six years now. And the last few years it's been in my work bag that I take every day to my corporate job in New York City. And as a side note, if you're like me, you watch every day carry uh, pocket thumb videos often, but at the same time you're sick of the whole uh, spread that you see people claim to carry every day. I mean, there's no way you actually carry three high-speed knives and two notebooks. Anyways, so the philosophy is good, but uh, I personally tend to get caught up in the item and unfortunately focus less on the purpose, but I like gear. So um, in this case, I think I've done a good job of balancing my needs with a high-quality item. So why do I carry uh, Victorinox? Why not Leatherman? Uh, as a side note, I do prefer Leatherman's or some other durable heavyweight multi-tool. But unfortunately, we do have restrictions here in New York City on what blade lengths we can carry. And yeah, I know uh, Leatherman's are not spring-operated. Uh, they're not considered gravity knives or butterfly knives. And there are definitely models out there that I can use. But I got it as a gift, so... Uh, I'd rather save my money for a full-size multi-tool that I'll keep in my car, or keep in a toolbox, or take on a trip. So, honestly, uh, having a Swiss Army knife has been pretty neat in that I actually use it in the office to open up boxes and repair things. And it's funny because I'm like the handyman in our company, and it's kind of sad that no one else really knows how to fix or maintain uh, basic items anymore. Uh, anyways, so... Besides for some small scuffs, the knife has held up pretty well, and I've never had any issues with it. It's definitely not flimsy, but I would use discretion on what kind of jobs uh, I would use it for. And, you know, you may want to use uh, full-size tools for some pro some projects that you're working on, and you may not want to rely on uh, the strength of this. So it comes in at uh, 3.5 inches long and 6.5 ounces uh, weight. Uh, it's really not heavy at all and it balances on the belt very nicely. I also got this sheath from uh, one of uh, the major uh, Swiss Army knife retailers. I'll post a link in the description. And unfortunately it is quite difficult to insert a belt in. It, you almost have to really squeeze it in and every time I squeeze, anytime I squeeze it in it really feels like uh, the sheath is going to break or come loose or start to fray and yeah you do see it's fraying a little bit over here so I'm thinking it's not really going to hold up to time very well but for my purposes I'm carrying it in the back so uh, it's fine it does fit in nice and snug in here and uh, that's how I carry it just like that I did add a long uh, I guess lanyard you'd call it uh, Timberland came in uh, with some shoes that I bought, and it's pretty makes it very nice to grab and pull it right out of my bag, and not have to waste time uh, fiddling through the bag. I'll go over some of the features of the knife, and I have on my computer next to me a list of all the tools, some of which I use very often, and some of which I don't use at all. So uh, let's begin. So first off, let's start from here. You've got your small blade. This is probably what I use most often for cutting boxes that, because the longer blade tends to get caught in, in the box and uh, doesn't really pry itself loose. But the small blade is the one I use most often. It's held pretty well, nice and sharp. Next, you've got your long blade. And this is New York uh, compliant. So you can take this in New York City, not a problem at all. I don't use this as much. Uh, you can see some engraving there. Got it. Uh, you know, I got it as a gift, so they engraved uh, some initials there. And there is no locking mechanism to these blades. They just stick open. So you got it. When you when you're using it, be careful so that it doesn't close on you. But they generally do a good job of staying open. Next, we've got the. This is what they call a large, no, this is the wood saw. Never used it before, 
but uh, it's quite sharp. Okay, this is a ruler, and it's also a, they call it a fish scaler with hook disgorger. Uh, never used, never used that before. Probably will never use it, but it's pretty neat. Just show it off. Scissors, very useful. Scissors is probably the second most uh, common tool that I use on here, besides the uh, blade. Uh, good thing on the Swiss Army knife is that this has a scissor. Some Leatherman don't have a scissor. Just throwing it out there. And I do use this. It's has a very nice fine tip. Uh, it works. Next, got some uh, pliers, never used it, and personally it doesn't feel that strong when I try to squeeze it, but it's, it's solid enough, it's thick enough. You can probably uh, pinch and grab something if you needed to. Uh, magnifying glass, works a little dirty. You've got the Phillips. You've got two positions. You can keep it in this position if you want to work uh, with it pointing vertically down, or you can extend it so you can get a full grip. And it does lock somehow in place. You've got a, this is going to be your, uh, I think, uh, what do they call it? Um, combination tool so you have your bottle opener and a can opener and screwdriver okay and you've got your no, sorry this is your bottle opener can opener and screwdriver and wire stripper never used it before All right, on the other side, we have a, a fish hook, or I guess you can carry grocery bags in it. And we also have our chisel. Never used it before either. We have this is gonna be, let me just check that list again. This is called a fine screwdriver, I think. That's what it looks like. This is your awl. Never ever use that. I don't think I ever will. You have a corkscrew and very fine, I'll try to get this in focus, fine flathead uh, screwdriver that you can use for fixing glasses. And I have used those before for a friend and he was very thankful. So you never know when you'll use it. On the sides here, we have a pen. Um, never had to use it because I carry a pen anyway, but just in case. And got a little pick here, toothpick, and then a pair of tweezers. All right, and I believe that is everything. Yep, and as for maintenance, I do oil it once in a once a year or every few years if I notice it's getting dirty, but uh, hasn't seen much use that recently, so don't think I'll be oiling it anytime soon. And it does balance very nicely on the belt, so if you do want to carry it on your belt, it's a nice option. It's uh, not it's not going to attract any too much attention. Uh, nice little package over here. Anyway, thanks for watching, guys. Uh, like my video, subscribe, drop a comment below. I'll be sure to get back to you with any question and answer any of your questions. 
Uh, take care and be safe. Thanks for watching. And I do want to announce that I do have a bunch of videos coming up, including a review of my Ruger 1022. And I will be building a New York compliant AR. It's my first AR. I'll let you know how it goes. And I'll review each of the parts that I'm putting in. And they'll be affordable budget parts, but I'm not going to skimp on quality. And luckily, I do live in the suburbs. So this is a compliant, illegal build that hopefully others in New York can watch and uh, make their own. So uh, stay tuned. Thanks.